Hi all, my name is Jack Dennis. I'm a senior ResNet technician over here at University Housing. Um, I am here with y'all today to show you to kind of how to prepare your tech. Um, I am a junior information systems major in the Walton College of Business. Um, I have been with University Housing for about a year now and um, I'm just ready to, so ready for moving and have y'all come onto campus. Awesome Jack, thank you very much. Let's see what we can do to have y'all get all of your technology ready and so we have no hiccups and y'all don't have to get a hold of us which would be great. Um, we're so excited to have you on campus and get everything going as easily as possible. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. And just, uh, I'll make note that we're in the Maple Hill uh, East showroom. Uh, that's what the room we're using for the demonstration of the technology today. And uh, Jack, as you said, you are a senior uh, ResNet technician who is a junior in your classification. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. That's a little bit... Confusing, but I think I understand. Throws a lot of people off. Right, okay. So can you tell us a little bit about what ResNet is? Sure. Uh, ResNet's a collaboration between University Housing and uh, Campus Information Technology Services. Um, we work to kind of maintain the network infrastructure within the residence halls, as well as troubleshoot your devices. Um, if you have any issues with your wireless or wired Ethernet connections, we are the one that you call. Um, we work to troubleshoot your devices, and if we can't solve it, we find who can. Um, we work closely with the network engineers on campus, and you might find us out together, and um, we'll be out uh, troubleshooting your devices and uh, trying to make everything work for you as quickly and as soon as possible. So, if I arrive here and I'm having a problem connecting online or taking a test online or something like that, you are the guys we would call? Exactly. Um, you can get a hold of us through our website or by phone, email. Um, we respond to tickets really quickly. Do you make house calls? We do. Um, really? We, we okay. are out in every residence hall. Um, mm -hmm. We all have um, Bob's, so we can all get into any residence hall. And um, we set appointments with you. We are there exactly on time, and we do not miss appointments. Oh, okay, so you don't set like the big like whole morning... Uh, slot. You actually come generally when you expect to come. Right. We're not like a AT and T or the cable guy. We don't set a nine to twelve appointment. We are when we say we're going to be there at twelve o'clock. We are there no later than twelve o two. So wow. we always maintain a uh, time structure. With Punctuality. Time. Yes, sir. Much appreciated. Okay. Well, um, uh, so resident serves that service. How do people? How would students who are incoming? prepare their technology, according to ResNet. Well, a uh, big thing, getting uh, ready to bring your technology on campus. And you brought a laptop so yes, we can show so some things, too. Do you want to uh, sit down and show us, sure. or what works best? Uh, I'll sit down and show okay. you all a um, big thing. If you have a game console or an Apple TV or anything like mm -hmm. that, a big thing is registering your device. And one right. thing you can do that, here's the ResNet homepage on the University Housing website. Oh. Um, yeah. Just for a quick reference, uh, our website is housing.uark.edu. Okay. Um, on, this, on the left, or not left, right side here, you'll see a quick link that says manage my login with your UART credentials. This is the same uh, username and password that you use to log into your housing portal or UA Connect. And then once you log in, you'll see the devices you have registered, and you'll also have the option to register your devices. Which devices need to be registered? Sure, uh, good question. Uh, computers and mobile devices, such as iPads and phones and Androids, any iOS or Android device do not need to be registered. However, if you have an Apple TV, an Xbox, PS3, Roku devices, media devices, or game consoles, those will need to be registered. Which game console do you have? Um, I actually do not have a game console. Oh, okay. Are but, you, do um, you do any gaming? I do. I use I uh, Whenever I game, I use my roommate's Xbox One. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And Xbox One, according to that, does need to be registered. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, and they're really easy to do. We have step-by-step -step videos on our website on how yeah. to find the necessary information. And I can link to those videos um, kind of in the show notes, if you will, of this broadcast. But you can also find them on the YouTube channel where you might find this broadcast. And they're in a playlist called um, ResNet Information. Yeah, and um, we just spent a lot of the summer updating a lot of our uh, videos as we've had a lot of changes on campus. So they're all fresh, new, up-to-date, so no worries on uh, making sure that you do not have out-of-date information on those videos. Don't want that out-of-date information. Okay, so then again, this is where you would register. Did you, I'm sorry, did I cut us off when we were going through the process, or no, did you um, register successfully, so, so to speak? Um, this is my Apple TV. When mm -hmm. I lived on campus, I had my Apple TV registered on campus. So basically, it's really easy to register. You just kind of click on what you want to register. So mm -hmm. here's a game console. And then let's say we want to register an Xbox One. You just type in the name of the device, like Xbox. And then so you have the option to 
um, register as wired or wireless. Mm -hmm. So we can register as a wireless. You just type in the MAC address. It's going to What's be, a MAC address? So a MAC address is basically... I don't know what that is. It's basically the serial number of the network card in your device. Okay. Um, a lot of people think it's for a Mac computer. It's not. Every device on campus, the Cox cable box. Which we're going to go over uh, a little bit later. My computer, uh, your iPhone, your iPad, your Windows computer, everything that connects to the internet has a MAC address. And that MAC address is... So it's, like, it's like almost a physical address. And it's, it is. It's the place where it lives. Or exactly. It's the thing that it, okay. uh, some computers will actually call it a physical address. Huh. Some people will call it the... Some devices will call it a physical address, a MAC address, computer address, um, a lot of different names that it's called. Um, but we will use that MAC address to kind of inform the network that this device is coming online, and then that way the network will properly allow it to come online and you can surf the internet. Fantastic. Okay. I keep interrupting as you go through this process. By the way, there's a great gnome up there. <laughs> Um, was that, is that the entire process of registering? Yeah, so once okay. you find the, the MAC address, you'll just mm -hmm. click Add a New Device, and then it will pop up, up here, and then you're good to go online. Once you have registered your device, you will connect to a network called NetAccess, and, that, and more information on that can be found on our website. Okay. So you register the device. You can do it all by yourself. You don't have to call exactly. ResNet, although if you run into troubles, you certainly could contact ResNet. Any right? trouble, you are welcome to contact us at any time. Um, during move-in, we'll, um, we'll be here that Saturday and Sunday after the first day of unassisted move-in, and we'll be here uh, all week next week. And um, you can call us, email us, uh, open a problem ticket on our website, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Sure. And um, we'll be happy to assist you, and we will do it as soon as possible. Right. Um, one thing to keep in mind during move-in, we get a lot of tickets, so it might take us a couple. Uh, it might take us about an hour or so to get back to you, but we will get back to you as soon as possible. Did you say an hour or so? That's the plan this year. Wow. Um, okay. But That's we will. Quick turn. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hopefully not too long. So um, what do you want to show us next, Jack? I'm just going to show you how to open a ticket. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to do that, so you can go back on our website. You can scroll down. So go to whatever device you're trying to register. And then, so let's say you're trying to register a PS4. There's a video right there on how to find the MAC address of your PS4. And then you can scroll down, and then you will hit Submit a Problem Ticket or Register Your Device. And then it'll come back to this page. And then you can just hit Report a Network Problem. Select your primary concern. So let's say you cannot connect to the Wi-Fi. And then the issue would be with my PS4. So you can hit either if the issue is wired or wireless. It is a, let's say it's a wireless issue, and then you can put any further information. So mm -hmm. we're just going to say, help, it's not working. Help. It's not working. Not working. And then this will pop back up in our system, mm -hmm. and there you go. Uh, that is available to us instantly, and we should get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, does that form also let them detail where they are? Um, yes, so the... Uh, like I'm in Maple The Hill system just... talks to our uh, online booking portal. Okay. So when you see here, I used to live in Northwest Quad D, and it still sees that. So it shows that I am currently in Harding Hall. Oh, so So okay. um, this will, uh, when we log in and see it, it will show us your exact location and room number so we know exactly how to help you. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Um, that is how to submit a uh, ticket if you have any problems. Yeah, if you have any problems, open a ticket and... If for some reason you can't open a ticket, it's rare, but it happens, give us a call and we will help you as soon as possible. Sure. We have, about, we have a couple of people watching us right now. Feel free to chime in with any questions. Jack is a great source of information about ResNet and all things related to technology in the room. Um, yeah, we were, there were some free tools, too, we might yeah. discuss. So University Housing and IT Services offer a couple, a couple free tools. Uh, one thing that I highly recommend is downloading the Semantic Antivirus. You can find this by going to techarticles.uark.edu slash antivirus. Mm -hmm. um, if you are living on campus, you'll want to download either the Mac on campus version or the Windows on campus version. I love the software suite of antivirus because it just kind of sits there in the back. It doesn't ping you to do updates or anything. It, just, it does everything quietly on its own, and you don't really have to touch it, and it blocks everything. It's a great I'm glad you say that, Jack, because I've, there have been some products I've downloaded before that just scream at me constantly like every time right. I'm on a website they're like no danger danger so this one is much more chill right exactly um, I have it on my computer and completely forget it's even there it's a great piece of software I highly recommend it semantic 
Okay, great. And if you down, you need to download it from the IT services site to get it for free, right? Yes, and you'll have to log in with your UARC credentials, mm -hmm. and then um, make sure this one's kind of weird. You have to type in your UARC username at uarc.edu, otherwise it will not download. Okay. Okay. And then another great piece of software that um, IT services just started offering this year is Microsoft Office. If you do not have Microsoft Office on your computer, the university is offering it free to all students this year. Wow. Um, you will go to uh, it.uark.edu slash office. And then from there, you can click the links, log in with your UARC credentials, and mm -hmm. then it will give you the option to download Microsoft Office. And when you say Microsoft Office, you mean Microsoft Word, it's Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Excel, Outlook, all of the all of the great Microsoft Office uh, programs that you OneNote. Need. Does it come with OneNote? It does. Um, okay. I, yes, it does come with OneNote, and on the Windows version, it does. Uh -huh. On the Mac version, you can download it from the Mac App Store. Okay. Um, do you use Do you use OneNote or Evernote or anything? For I your use classes? Evernote. Um, I'll show it to you real quick. Okay. Evernote's a great program. I use it for all my classes. Um, it's really easy to take notes and it's, yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because it is, I highly recommend it. Here is, um, one note that I used to take. This was my B-Law final review uh -huh. and, um, it's really great. It will show, once you print your notes, it will show you exactly where you took it and it's a really helpful tool. So Evernote, um, also free, I believe, though there is a cost associated yes. with the higher level one. And then OneNote, which comes for free. Yes. Just as a student. You get that, uh, OneNote's so. free through Microsoft. It's a really great tool as well. I'm really, OneNote and Evernote are the same thing. Evernote's my personal preference, but you can use whatever. I've used both. Yeah, choose whatever's best for you. Um, any other free tools we want to talk about? Um, make sh definitely make sure you take advantage of the Microsoft Office and antivirus. Um, the, univers the university offers a couple free tools. Um, I can't name them right off the top of my head. But a uh, couple other things to think about is as a college, as an incoming college student, you have access to a lot of free tools. Um, those are just things to research when you're on Google. Um, a lot of companies love to give free stuff to college students. Oh yeah, the .edu on the email. Exactly. That's always so, a cool So um, Amazon Prime, for example, um, now that you have a UARC email address, you can get Amazon Prime student for free. So you can take advantage of the free two-day shipping what? and what? all of those great things. Anybody wow. that has a .edu email address can sign up for that. Nice. I didn't even know that myself about Amazon Prime for a student. So um, what about, let's get into wireless. Stuff. Wireless. And, and wired stuff, sure. I guess, a.k.a. Ethernet. So we have two ways to connect to the uh, network in our rooms. Mm -hmm. um, unless you are in Buchanan Drill from Gladstone Ripley, you have the option to connect via Ethernet. Ethernet, Ethernet, or mm -hmm. Wi-Fi in the rooms. Um, you can and drove from Gladstone River, but you only have Wi-Fi. Um, but if you're in Maple Hill, Humphreys, Yoakum, Quads, all the other buildings, you can connect through Ethernet or wireless. Mm -hmm. um, Ethernet is the way that I recommend connecting. However, um, a lot of students do prefer to connect through Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi at times can be unreliable. Um, that comes to say, it's not like it's down all the time or anything, just sometimes it can drop like any other wireless network at home. Uh, if you have one at your old school, it just tends to happen, especially when you don't want it to happen. So if you're taking an exam online, if you're taking a quiz, always plug into the wired port in your room. Um, you can go and purchase an ethernet cord. At, so they at, need to bring their own ethernet yes, cord. Yes, we do not provide those. Um, you can buy them at the campus computer store, which is inside the bookstore. What do they run for? Like, what's generally the cost of an ethernet? Five, six bucks. Okay. Um, they're really cheap. Um, you can buy them at the Walmart on campus or what we call Small Mart. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to keep in mind is if you have a newer computer like mine, uh, it will not have an ethernet port in it. Uh-oh. However, you can buy uh, the dongle through Apple. Mm -hmm. I believe they're $29, and it's a great investment, if, especially if you're living on campus. Okay. And in here, uh, the Ethernet is... The Ethernet port in Maple Hill is generally behind the desk in each room. Okay. And um, if you're in one of the tower buildings, like Humphreys or Yoakum, they're on each desk. They're very visible. Um, if you're in HOTS, they are behind the beds. If you are in the Northwest Quad, they're under your desk right next to the cable outlet. Um, so Humphreys, Pomfret, Yoakum, Reed, they're all on your desk. And they're very visible. They're right next to your phone port, which is unactivated in case if you do want to use a phone port, you can open a ticket with university housing and that charge will be billed to your account. Um, if you want a landline. If you want a landline. I highly doubt you do because most people have iPhones these days, but in the off chance you do exists, want one, exists. they do exist. All right. Um, but Ethernet ports are in every room except for Buck Joke and Gladroom. 
So as you were describing the ethernets and the various rooms, I could see you like visually in your brain going through the rooms. You've been through all these rooms. I have been in almost every room on campus, actually. Wow. So I've seen it all. Well, a deep well of experience. Okay, great. Um, so that you know kind of tells us about when to use ethernet versus wireless. Generally wireless all the time, unless yeah. it's a test or something. Sure. Um, de I generally only use wireless unless I am taking a test, which of course I plug in. Oh, one great thing this year is we do not allow routers anymore mm -hmm. because every building now has Wi-Fi. Um, this is something you Yay. might have heard in the past. That's new, right? Exactly. That every uh, building would have Wi-Fi? Walton, uh, you might have heard Walton Hall didn't have Wi-Fi. Futural, Holcomb, Gibson, Gregson, and Reed all didn't have Wi-Fi. They now do. Um, we have worked all throughout the summer to make sure Wi-Fi has gotten installed in our buildings, and they're there. It's faster than ever, it's more stable than ever, and we're really excited to be able to bring this to y'all, our residents, this year. I'm excited. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's going to save y'all a lot of time, and it's going to be a lot easier for y'all. Fantastic. So, maybe uh, we want to talk about, what, the, the new Cox lineup? Right. So, uh, this year, another big thing that just came to University Housing is digital cable. Um, we have been working with Cox Communications, our cable provider, to bring uh, cap to bring digital cable to all of our uh, residence halls. Um, so this year, uh, you get a uh, more extended channel lineup. It comes with the remote, and you have a digital cable box that has been mounted on your wall. Um, so I'm going to take you through it real quick, just show you quickly how to set it up. It's really easy to do. Um, you don't have to be tech savvy to do it. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that we're not going to be really responsible for supporting uh, the Cox uh, cable boxes. However, if you come over here and take a look at the cable box, there is an 800 number to call. And throughout move-in, we are going to have uh, Cox technicians on campus to be able to uh, address all the issues you may have. Right. So when it comes to the cable, basically Cox will take care of that for you. We're, we're kind of you know facilitating making sure it's the easiest way to use it, but... They're going to be ultimately the ones who are going to do that troubleshooting right. about ResNet. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take you through real quick how to set it up. It's super easy. Um, you have a couple ways to set it up. Um, you, each box has an Ethernet, has not Ethernet, an HDMI cord connected to it. Mm -hmm. Or if you have an older TV, you still have the option to connect uh, uh, the old coax. coax. Yeah, right. coax. All right. So uh, I have an HDTV over here that I'm going to set up for you all. Um, a big thing is that HDTV is new to university housing this year. I know it might not be new to you. Uh, <laughs> however, um, we're really excited to be able to offer this to y'all. We've been standard definition until this year. Until this year, until this summer. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you want it, you have the option to go to the Cox Solutions Store, and you are able to uh, purchase a DVR from Cox for a monthly fee. Um, I believe it runs about $30 a month. If you, if you love cable and you love to be able to record your shows, it might be something worth looking at. So you've got that DVR add-on. Right, and then that. you just plug it into the cable splitter right here, and mm -hmm. then you can uh, use it just like a cable box you would have at home. Okay, great. So we got a stunt TV that you brought from home, yeah. right? Yeah, so basically it's always going to look wound up like this. Uh -huh. um, hopefully it will. We've had, a lot, we've had a couple camps and stuff, so the cable might be dangling, but um, you will have an HDMI cable. You'll just take it and then plug it into the back of your TV. Yes, and uh, again, this is your stunt TV that you brought from home. Yes, Thank I you brought this from home. And um, you will have a remote. Um, this will be provided by Cox Communications. Mm -hmm. If you do not have one in your room, call Cox, and they will provide one for you. And there's that 1-800 number right there on the thing. Yes, yep. um, however, uh, make sure you get with the Cox technicians on campus. That will be here. Through. Oh, big thing, uh, Cox Communications will be on campus through move-in to be able to address any issues you may have. Um, we don't know where they will be yet. However, that information will be available during move-in. Right. On the website, uh, we'll be sure and post where they'll be, as well as the channel lineup and some additional documentation you may find helpful right. when setting it up. But we will have representatives, as Jack said, from Cox on campus during move-in to help you if you run into a problem with this. Right. Um, so we're really excited to show this to you. Um, this is a new service that we haven't had yet. Um, this is a part of the whole Cox Go All Digital project. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a better TV service for all. A little, Why don't you um, sit down so I can get you guys together. together. You and the TV together. Sure. So um, this is Rib TV. It's called or, uh, the Razorback Information Board. Um, this is on channel 1930 in every room. Um, so you, you, will, you will have this channel. It's, oh, yeah, so there you go. Um, this will be available on every channel. Um, and then, That's an internal information right. channel 
that the university has specific to us, not in the larger community, I think. Yeah, so um, it's always great to have. Um, it just gives you news on campus. You have a little uh, news bar down at the bottom that um, it will show your weather and other pertinent information. Um, you'll get information about the union on this channel and um, just events that are going on on campus as well. Mm -hmm. um, another cool channel is uh, UATV. Yeah, that's done by students, right? Like, that's yes. the student news channel. So it's done by a journalism department. So. Mm -hmm. We've got a broadcast right now from students, right? Um, no, that was the CW. That was the CW, yeah. Um, <laughs> however, uh, this is a program that is provided by our journalism department, and they will show cool shows that have been produced by students. Yeah, like some documentaries, local documentaries, stuff like that, too. Yeah, uh, I actually used to be a journalism major here at the UBA, so um, I've had a, a little inside look to see how this was done. It's a pretty cool process. Tell me about HBO. HBO. So, yes, this is another cool thing. We used to only provide one HBO channel, and now we provide three. Um, so we, have, we provide y'all with the regular HBO, and then HBO 2, and HBO Family. Um, those are on channels 340, 341, and 342. So we'll just tune Nicholas in. Nicholas Cage was on earlier. Let's see if he's still on. Yeah. Old Nick Cage. Yeah, so National Treasure's playing National right Treasure, now, okay. Just in there. Okay. But um, it's a great thing to have. Um, HBO, if, you, if you're ever bored watching a movie, <clears throat> HBO always has something good on. And, um, it's just a good pastime. Would you show us the program guide? Sure. So another big thing with these cable boxes is that you actually get a guide. Oops. Can you turn it down just a little bit? Yes. Oh, Let me mute it for you. Um, so with this guide, you can go look. These are all the channels that are available to you. Uh, you get a lot of channels this year. We used to provide only 70. Now we provide all of these. Um, a big thing is, um, so there's, there's yeah, UATV, and then we get all these channels as well. Um, but you can start at the bottom, so I think you can type in any channel, and then you can just start from the bottom and then go from there. So it's really good for channel surfing, and um, there's all of your local broadcast channels. And then as you go farther down, you get like your cable TV channels, and the the guide's just really something cool yeah. to have. Because, you got music channels and all. Exactly. We should, you know, we'll just sit here and watch, and they can watch us watch TV. Wouldn't that be? No, yeah. we won't. It'd be like pant drying. Um, so uh, you're using the remote control, and you're kind of pointing it backwards. That makes me think that it's an infrared. Right, so it is an infrared. Uh, it is an infrared remote. However, a lot of the times the boxes will be hidden behind an armoire or a Yeah, desk. that's the case here, in fact. We had to move yes. this out to However, get to access to that. You have what's called an infrared blaster. This is right here. Uh, it's connected to your cable box. Mm -hmm. And it has a little sticky. Uh, it has a little sticky pad on the back of the TV, on the back of the uh, infrared blaster. Mm -hmm. You can unwind it and pull this out and put it on your TV, stick it to your TV, and you can just point your remote right as your TV like you're talking to your cable box. Okay. And um, that way you don't have to worry about having to, to move the dresser every time you want to control your TV. So just stick that on your television or in a place where you know you're going to point to. Right. Yeah. But it, you have to have line of sight to that. Yes, always right. have line of sight to it, but it never really should be an issue because the cord's generally long enough. Okay. Fantastic. And if it's not long enough, we have an, we have the ability to make it longer. Um, any questions as people are watching about the technology and Cox cable that's coming? All right. Well, we'll finish by talking about uh, Laundry Alert. Right. Can you give us a little more depth on that? Sure. So Laundry Alert is another <clears throat> new tool that's coming to University Housing this year. Um, so it is a really cool tool. I wish I had this when I lived on campus. Uh-oh. i sorry. My computer takes a quick second to log in. I'll talk <laughs> about Laundry Alert. A okay. hot moment to get going. Um, so Laundry Alert is basically a really cool tool that will show you when your laundry's done, if you're, what's going on in laundry rooms, how many washers and dryers are open, you can set a timer to when your washer's done, and it will shoot you an email when it's done. It's a really great tool to make sure your clothes don't go missing, or you're not holding someone back from using the washer and dryer. Uh, you can access it by going to housing.uark.edu slash laundry dash alert. Mm -hmm. And then from that website, you can, you can look at, uh, it will show you like how many washers and dryers are open, how many are in use, and it's just a really cool tool to show students and residents um, what they can do. Sure. And, and we're still bringing on some of the buildings. Right. And they'll um, all be brought on by August when people move in. Hopefully we, or we will uh, most likely have them all up by move-in, so all of y'all get to take advantage of this really cool service. Um, One of the things we've been mentioning in the other tours is that you can, you know, check to see if, um, if, the, if your laundry is... 
if it's open? Do I even come down the nine, ten floors of Yoakum or not? Uh, so I can check and see if it's going to be open for me. How would I do that here? Right, so um, you would just, <clears throat> so if you look here, um, so let's see. Here is Holcomb, for example. Mm -hmm. The base, the laundry room at Holcomb is in the basement, so it's really far away. Yes. Um, it will show you if you have, uh, it will show you that you have four dryers open, and we'll show you four dryers open, and it will show that zero, zero uh, washers and dryers are in use. So that's a good indication to walk down to the basement and um, throw your laundry in before anybody else does. Gotcha. Um, uh, now, I know you can also get notifications if you want through this system. How is that done? Sure. Um, I haven't actually used that tool yet, so let's walk oh, through it. Let's walk through it together. Let's learn together. So again, let's look at Holcomb. Okay. Um, so I there's a more detailed list of the different uh, machines, one through eight, and they're all available because you guys aren't here yet. Right. <laughs> so I think you can hit, I think you can check the box. Okay. And then you can hit let me know through email or text. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, let me know when this machine is done. And then you can just type in your uh, email address or phone number, and then you can hit submit, and they'll let you know when your um, washer and dryer is ready. It'll ping you. Also, if you're waiting on a washer and dryer to open, you can say, let me know when one washer is open, and then it will uh, shoot you a ping and let you know when it's oh, open. Oh, I didn't know that. So <clears throat> if everything's busy, you can say, yeah, let me know when the first one becomes available. Yes. Wow. And then it's a really <clears throat> good tool. It'll just shoot you an email and say, hey, we're done, and then... You can go down and throw your clothes in the washer or the dryer. Now, you were here as a student, you know, your freshman year and, and, and so on. Um, there was nothing like this. No. Um, what was laundry like? Was it a Mad Max wasteland? I lived what? at Humphreys last okay. year. And <clears throat> when you're using 10 wash, when you're fighting 520 residents for 10 washers and 10 dryers, it's you fend for yourself. Gotcha. And uh, with this tool, it's really great to have. You don't really have to go sit in the laundry room anymore and hope your clothes don't go missing and, or you don't have to walk down there and be like, I just walked down 10 stories and there's no washer and dryer. That, that to me seems like a source of frustration. It, it Not is knowing the sure. one's open. So <clears throat> with this tool, you don't really have to fight for washer and dryer. You just know it's there, you know it's ready, and it's a really great tool to have. Laundry alert, coming in the fall. Anything else we want to talk about when it comes to technology, Jack? Um, You've been great to tour us through. Yeah. Hey, a little Game of Thrones in the background there. Yeah. There, yeah. Okay. Um, a really, just really don't let having to get a hold of ResNet stress you out. Um, we're really here to help. Um, we love helping students. That's why we're here. That's what we're paid to do. Um, if you do run into any issues, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're really happy to help. Um, we're excited to help. Um, we'll, if there's something we can't solve over the phone, we will come out to your room or have you bring your computer up to the housing office. Um, you can call us anytime um, between the hours of 10 and 5 if it's just a problem with your laptop. You can bring your computer to the housing office, which is located at 960 West Douglas Street. It's right behind the bookstore. And um, we'll have technicians there from 9 to 5 every day. Um, you're welcome to just pop in and bring your computer over right after move-in. Fantastic. Well, um, <clears throat> you know, ResNet is mostly, mostly student workers. Yes, um, and, we're all student uh, workers except for my supervisor, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, he is a full-time employee. He supervises all of us. So it's students helping students, as they say. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jack. You want to wave us out? Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. We're so excited to have you all in for move-in, uh, and we're so ready to have you all here.